Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kreider here, and today we're going to be playing the first round of the Steam Showdown, round four. This is against Simic Mill by Dos Ofik. So let's go ahead and get started here. So right off the bat, we want a really fast hand. This is a good curve. I have a first turn creature followed by the looter scooter, and then we can start throwing some madness creatures down. Uh, three lands, two swamps, and a mountain. Uh, the deck really doesn't need more than one of each, so uh, doing fantastic so far. It looks pretty good. So he takes a little bit of time, decides what if, whether he wants to keep or not. Um, I get to go first, which is a something I will definitely do uh, without hesitation. Um, not that I have an, a very, an option. However, uh, with the curve I have, it's uh, really good, and hopefully I can draw something other than land for a while. Uh, the deck really doesn't need more than three. Uh, my highest casting cost is five technically, but I can madness that one out for three. So uh, once I get past four, it's really not necessary. I do like uh, if the game goes past turn six or seven to get out to about five mana, it makes it easier. So here I draw the Blood Hall Priest, I believe is its name, the 4-4 four, four for uh, four mana, black, red, and two colorless. Um, Madness that out for three mana, so it looks pretty good to get that out next turn, just depending on what I draw. Uh, can't complain about getting that creature early, uh, really above the curve creature overall. So my opponent is playing a Simic uh, Fog Mill deck. This is probably not his best matchup. He really has to get out of turn 3 tutelage and be able to fog me fairly consistently to survive. Uh, he has no ma mass removal spells in the deck and only f uh, 4 or 5 creatures if I recall. So it's uh, it's definitely an uphill battle for him, but he has to start milling early and often. Um, so here I drop out the arrow of Falconroth and activate the looter scooter with it. So now I'm going to swing across for 4. Um, my discard here, uh, Alms of the Vein, will get another 3 damage in. So technically, it looks like I'm doing about uh, 7 damage here, getting down to 12. So I end up drawing another land off the, uh, the loot, and I discard the Alms of the Vein, and I throw that directly into its face, and uh, drain him for 3. And if I recall here, he takes a little bit of time and ends up fogging the four damage. Uh, may have been a mistake. I don't think it would have made a difference. He doesn't ever really get a foothold in this game. And I come out pretty much on curve. But he does take a little bit of time to think here. And I do believe he decides to fog. And there we go. So I end up only doing the three damage instead of seven and leaves him at 16 life at the end of the uh, turn and then I pass. Okay, in his turn he drops another forest and his best option here is a tutelage since he's already used a fog up. And he sits here and he thinks about this for a little while And he's thinking some more. And thinking some more. And then finally he decides to use take inventory to draw a card, hoping it is a fog that he has and passes the turn. Uh, this particular game, it doesn't help him. I came out so quick and on curve and went first. Uh, definitely did, make, did not make it easy for him. Now here I have a couple options. I could drop Key to the City, hit him for Alms of the Vein. Um, I do end up, or I could uh, drop the uh, Vampire and then use the extra mana to hit him for three with the, uh, Alms of the Vein. I do end up going with the uh, uh, line of play that deals the, or uses the most mana, you know, use all my mana, which isn't something I technically advise all the time. It's not always the right line of play. Um, in this particular case, I think it was, because the uh, key to the city really wasn't going to do me a lot of good in the short term. 
uh, or even really the long term. I don't want to get to that point in this game. So we went ahead and brought him out, used him to activate the looter scooter, and a swing across for seven. Um, at this point, I don't know if he has a fog or not. Uh, odds are not good that he does, but uh, we'll see here in just a second. So I end up looting here. Draw a, another uh, vampire, and I discard the Alms of the Vein to drain another 3 from his life, bringing him to 13, and myself up to 26. Um, I really don't see the point where I have to worry about him killing me for, with damage. Um, his only real creature that could do that is the Torrential Gear Hulk, and I have answers to that in the deck. Uh, more than likely, he just used that block. So, I end up doing a 11 damage to him that turn, 10 damage to him that turn, bring him down to 6. Um, very dangerous position for him. I have lethal on board, and I have at least another 9 cards that deal direct damage to him, one form or another. So he has to be exceptionally careful uh, with the rest of the game. And here he thinks for a little bit, and I believe the next land he plays is another forest. And he's thinking a little bit here. Um, he drops down the Alchemist Vile, draws a card from that, and at this point, he ends up scooping, and we go on into our next game. The deck just came out a little too fast for him. All right, on to game two. I uh, came out on curve pretty much flawless uh, execution of the deck coming out, which was really nice. Uh, I didn't even make a mistake, which is pretty unusual for me. Um, trust me, I'll make it up this game. So, we start off right here, four lands, and probably the absolute slowest hand I could have ever asked for. Uh, definitely shipping this one back. Now, this is a five lander with one swamp, but I saw I had a looter scooter and an Olivia. Olivia is just broken in duels, um, which you'll see a little bit later in the game. And I decided at this point, you know, it might be slow getting started, but at least I got something. And I can loot away the lands if I need to. Um, one of the things I've noticed in duels is a five land hand almost always gets you a sixth land. <laughs> Sometimes even a seventh right, out, right in a row. Right here I got pretty lucky. I only hit the one land. So I ended up drawing uh, the 4-3 haste vampire. Um, he has the 1-2 creature that mills. And sorry, I don't call the names off the top of my head, especially that one, because I really see it. So he ends up milling, and he mills off two lands and a looter scooter. Um, since I have the second one hand, I'm not overly concerned about it. He ends up taking a second turn using Think Inventory to draw a card. And in this particular case, it's a, a fantastic time. I don't have uh, any gas. So we drop the looter scooter, and we pass the turn. Um, looking really good for me right now. In the long term, uh, if he was able to kill creatures, which his deck doesn't actually have that ability, but if he was, he could really, really hurt me because I have nothing I can do. So as you can see, I pull out the graveyard, the two lands, and the looter scooter. Very, very thankful we got rid of the lands because that would have uh, been a slow, slow start for me. So he starts off here by in main turning, uh, milling me. He gets rid of an Aaron Falkenroth and two more lands. Uh, really good for me. I have plenty of lands, don't need any more. A black uh, source would have been great, but it's not necessary. And he drops a uh, Gyre to Reach Sanctum, and he also has out the Alchemist file, uh, which is really good against this uh, deck or any deck with vehicles because they tap their creatures to activate a vehicle. Then you make it so the vehicle doesn't attack, and you basically waste uh, at least one creature's attack phase with it. Oh, really good. Unfortunately, it only can stop the vehicle, because what they can do is if you tap the regular creature at any point before the attack, then they just tap it to make the vehicle a creature, and suddenly you have to deal with the vehicle still. So all it does is basically shut down the vehicle in a lot of situations here. I had nothing better to do, and I really wanted to get rid of the vial right now. So I made him make a decision, and uh, I won't say that he fell for it per se, because it really was a good decision to make. Uh, definitely kept me from looting in this uh, situation, which is uh, really good. So we're starting his turn four. He's still at 20. 
Um, which, if you remember from last game, I had him down to 16, and even lower in some games that I've played online with this particular deck. So, he has a 1-2 um, creature, but he has no energy, so I decide not to kill it with the combust or excuse me, the uh, unlicensed disintegration. Um, I really want to save it in case he drops out uh, more energy, or you get rid of it as a blocker, or more importantly, if he drops the Torrential Gear Hulk. So, here I'm going to showcase, basically, why Olivia is broken in duels. So it does take me a while to figure this play out, but I dropped the 1-1 one, one, uh, creature, the Bromat Courier. Uh, then I discarded the Hasty Madness Vampire, the 4-3, and I end up uh, putting them both on the board, plus, plus one counters, and haste. So here we go. 1-1, one, one, we'll end up discarding the other card. Now here he decides to tap out get two energy and draw two cards with the glimmer of genius and that's all great now where I think he may have made a mistake here as he taps his creature the mastery of inquiries mills me for three more now suddenly he doesn't have a blocker <clears throat> and I can drop out the incorrigible youths here my 4-3 uh, haster and I'll discard a land to give it uh, plus one plus one, it already has haste. And this is a very big damage turn to him. So I use the 2-2 two -two to activate the looter scooter here. And we cruise across and we end up doing 11 damage to him. A uh, really good turn for me. Now you'll notice here I decide not to loot with the uh, looter scooter. And the reason because is I don't want to get rid of anything in my hand. And if anything I discard won't be able to madness out because I'm tapped out. So I decide it's just better to uh, stay where I'm at. So he starts his turn 5. Um, he's down to 9. Really good turn for me last turn. So I'm not looking forward to him dropping out a tutelage. I cannot interact with it. And then he can just start mil uh, fogging me out during my attack phases. He's still fairly high life with 9, although I do have 6 damage in hand. So he ends his turn, we come back to mine, and I'm thinking I am uh, not going to do well with this attack phase. And it's uh, pretty much a given. He's got some sort of fog effect in there. And I believe this is where I make the... No, I don't make the bonehead move yet. That's coming up. This is a... Uh, pl the play I make is pretty stupid. So I do tap the uh, Burmat Courier to activate the Looter Scooter, and I swing across. At this point, he pauses, and he's looking. Oh, he doesn't even pause. He just fogs here. My bad. So we know I'm not going to deal any damage, and then he decides to mill me for uh, three cards. And he gets rid of another Courier and some a land and another creature. Not a big deal. So we'll go ahead and discard the Alms of the Vein and get three life from him. Now here I really thought he was going to do something different, uh, but instead he draws two cards. Okay. And I respond by using the Unlicensed Disintegration to remove his creature and deal three damage to him. Now the Veins ends up uh, finishing up, and we got him down to three life. So, dangerous situation for him to be in. And we move on to his next turn. So, as far as for attacking goes, I'm looking pretty good. I have my 5-3 haste vehicle. I have a couple of 3-3s. Three and I have a five, uh, four as well. So I was a little worried there he might uh, save up his man into a Torrential Gear Hulk. However, he uh, ends up drawing a pair of cards and dropping the Master of in Inquiries. So I draw another land <clears throat> and also the uh, cast the five three vehicle here. 
I decided to keep the land in hand so I can loot it. Because uh, I have my five land. I really don't need any more. Now this is where I make the bonehead move. Instead of activating the looter scooter, I end up activating the Brewmat Courier and sacrifice it in my hand. Uh, not a big crisis, but really, really stupid. I could have done better. Um, I unfortunately do that more often than I, I really want to admit. Uh, not paying attention with the uh, abilities of the creature. So a lot of times I want to tap the creature manually instead of using the vehicle's uh, ability to tap the creature. So, just a uh, word to the wary, that's how you actually do it. He ends up using commits the festivities here to prevent the damage. And we go, and so far he's milled pretty good, but he hasn't hit any of my damage spells. And that's pretty much how I think I'm going to win the game. So here he decides he needs to uh, loot with the Gaia Reach Sanctum and try to find an answer, which is, probably isn't a bad idea. Um, the fact he taps this guy on his turn makes me think that he has a uh, fog effect in his hand. So he ends up using uh, two mana to cast another uh, alchemist vial. And then he uses this uh, main phase Gaia Reach Sanctum to draw out and discard a card. Which I can kind of understand because... I don't have the mana to cast anything madness with it. So I end up discarding land. Um, doesn't hurt my feelings a bit. I'm pretty much uh, done with land. And pretty happy not to draw another one. So we start my turn. And I draw the basically my victory condition. So the only way for him to get out of this turn is to have a fog. And leave his mana open for a dispel on the Alms of the Vein. Knowing this, I don't use it either of my artifacts or um, vehicles, and I just swing them in the creatures since either of them is lethal to him. And he ends up with Commits the Festivities, tapping out. At this point, all I have to do is cast Alms of the Vein, hard cast it, and I win the game. And there we go. So I end up winning against Dosophic 2 0. Uh, very difficult for him to win this game. I came out really fast game one and game two, uh, definitely not as fast, but I hit really hard when I did hit and just kept putting the pressure on and he couldn't keep up. So anyways, thanks for watching. It was very good games. Um, I think Dosophix has a really interesting deck and should do well against other mid-rangey type decks. So take care and adios.